What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ryan Corcoran. I'm a real estate investor, entrepreneur, business starter, business owner, coach. Um, welcome to my channel. We talk about real estate here. We talk about investing. We drive cool cars. We live an abundant life. Thank you for finding this video. Please subscribe, like, and comment on this. It helps the video get spread to more people so more people can learn grow and become better investors, make more money, become financially free. Today we're gonna to be talking about creative financing in real estate. Now, when I had zero properties, zero units, zero rentals, I used creative financing to buy my first duplex. I also used it to buy a three family. So it took me from zero to five units, from five to 20, from 20 to 100, and we're now over 230 units. Every single deal has been creatively financed. I have not done one single deal that is just go to the bank, get a 75% loan to value, bring the 25% down, own the property, and be done with it. Not one single time have I done that. Creative financing is the most important skill you can develop after finding really good deals. And the reason for this is if you can find a really good deal and you can pair it with creative financing, you can really take down any deal, any amount of deals, scale really quickly, and we're gonna go over how I was able to do this, what strategies I've used, and different ways you can merge them together to take down these really great deals. Number one, always try to use bank debt. Bank debt is the cheapest debt you can get. Right now it's at like four and a half, five percent It was at like three, three and a half percent for, for commercial loans. That's completely unheard of. That does not happen, right? And so it, now it's up a little bit and people are kind of freaking out in, the, in, the, in my market at least, but hey, I'm still buying a bunch of deals. It's still relatively cheap debt. We borrow bank debt at 5%. Then it typically requires 20 to 25% of a down payment. This is when you get creative. You can use hard money for that. You can use private money. Um, you can use seller financing. You can use your own money, right? You can use friends and family's money, right? And so we're gonna dive into each one of these. So number one, we're gonna talk about private money. So we're gonna use simple numbers. A million dollar property, you need to bring $250,000 to the, to the table. You can go ahead and get a bank to lend you 750,000, get a private money investor to bring the 250. You have no money in the deal. The cash flow pays the private money investor. You do rehab on it, you refinance that property, you pay off the private money investor after that after the 12 months of the seasoning period, you've increased the rent significantly enough. And now I know it's not this simple. You got to know your market value. You got to know what it's going to be as complete. Um, but that is a simple concept of how you can go from bringing no money to the table to owning a property outright with 25% equity without any debt on it anymore. Number one. Number two, you can purchase it with hard money right up front. They'll usually do 80 or 90% loan to value, meaning you only have to bring usually 10 to 20% down. So I've done eight deals this year with hard money, so I bring 10% down. So we're going to use simple numbers again. $100,000 property, you only have to bring $10,000 down, right? A million dollar property, you only have to bring $100,000 down. Hard money is a high interest rate, usually eight, nine, 10%, okay? So, and they're all gonna be interest only for the most part. So this is super awesome because a lot of the times they'll fund the rehab as well. You just have to be super careful that you know your end value because you do not wanna get stuck in a really high interest rate um, loan with bridge with bridge loan, hard money loan, whatever, whatever you wanna call it, if you can't refinance in and, and get your equity out. And so, Again, private money can bring, can bring that 10% down. Your own money can bring that 10% down. An equity partner, meaning you split the property 50-50 with that person, you bring no money, that person brings the 10% down. You operate everything after you refinance, you both own it 50-50, you have no money in it. Your, your equity partner likely has no money into it either at this point because you've refinanced, right? But that's hard money, really good for short-term plays, really good for flips. For large properties, it can be really good, but it's a little bit risky again with the high interest rate. My third favorite, seller financing, seller carries, seller credits. Everything to do with seller paying you to buy the property, right? So I'm gonna give you an example. I bought a 10 unit property a couple months back. The seller financed the entire property because the property needed a lot of work. I didn't put a single dollar down. I'm using the cash flow to pay for the reserves. Again, I, I have no money in this property, right? So that's one way to do it. And why would a seller wanna do this? Well, number one, the seller is just gonna collect cash flow from his, my mortgage payments every single month to him. He doesn't have to pay capital gains tax on that in, uh, right up front, which is a huge benefit to him. Um, so th tons, tons of ways to do this with, um, with seller financing. Seller credits are awesome too. Let's say you have a property locked up for 
well, I'm gonna give you an example. 1.2 million, because this is the one I have right now, 1.2 million dollars for a 12 unit property. It's $100,000 a unit. We did the inspection, and it looks like it's gonna need about $200,000 of work to fix some foundation problems, right? So we said, okay, you give us a $200,000 seller credit at the closing table, and we'll handle the work after. Now, realistically, the work doesn't need to be done immediately. It can be done over time, right? Uh, but so, $200,000 seller credit. If we, we have to bring, let's do some quick math, so um, like almost $300,000 we have to bring to the table, right? So essentially we have to bring $300,000 at closing, but he's gonna give us a $200,000 credit. So now we only have, we have to bring $100,000 plus closing costs, so maybe $125,000 to the closing table on a $1.2 million asset, right? Now this is when it gets really fun. So you used seller credits, using regular bank debt who's gonna finance our rehab for us and we're bringing in a private money investor to cover that 125. So we just merged three different creative financings into one deal. And because this deal is worth, is worth way more than what we're buying it for, when we refinance this, we're get the, we, when this property is refinanced, that private money lender is gonna get paid off. The seller credit that we use is literally just going towards our down payment we're gonna have 25% equity in this $1.8 million asset with zero dollars of our own money into it. And this, my friends, is how you get the ball rolling and scale your real estate investing portfolio using the Burr method and using creative financing. Now there's a ton more creative financing options we can go through. I'm gonna stop here for now because those are my three favorite ones. I will do videos in the future on more. That, my friends, is gonna conclude the end of this video. Please like and subscribe again, I really appreciate it. Um, leave some comments and we'll see you next time.